Hello and welcome back to Road Trivia, the once a day road trip trivia quiz. Today's episode is number 920, the category Friday Night Pub Quiz number 27. This is a 20 question trivia quiz with a question 21 tiebreaker at the very end of the video if you need to stick around for that. All of the questions come from various categories with varying levels of difficulty. So thank you for watching and good luck on today's quiz. Question number one. Originally invented by R. W. Elsner, scientist Michael Faraday greatly improved upon the design of a chemistry lab device that produces a gas flame that was further improved upon by and named for what German chemist? It is called the Bunsen burner. His name, Robert Bunsen. Question two, Donna Jo Napoli set this story in Tasmania and it is the basis of the musical Honk. What is the name of this Hans Christian Andersen character that almost freezes to death, is shunned by a cat and a hen, but ultimately is accepted by friends and family? That title character is called The Ugly Duckling. Question number three. Erosion has caused these to move, so Goat Island now separates them. Ships use the Welland Canal to avoid it, and its sections include American, Horseshoe, and Bridal. The Horseshoe section is 173 feet high and is a source of hydroelectric power. What is the name of this popular landmark? The answer is the Niagara Falls. Question number four. It is said Christianity came to the Germanic peoples when this man's oak tree fell. Goats pull his chariot, his wife's name is Seif, and his parents were Odin and the giantess Jord. Who is this red-haired Norse god of thunder? The answer is Thor. Question number five. A Maryland forest in the Black Hills was used for what 1999 horror film about Heather, Josh, and Mike, three film students who vanished while making a documentary, leaving only their unfinished footage behind? That horror movie was called The Blair Witch Project. Question number six, featuring a profile of Queen Victoria, what was the name of the world's first adhesive postage stamp used in a public postal system that was first issued in the United Kingdom on May 1st, 1840, but was not valid for use until May 6th of that year? A popular one among stamp collectors, they called it the Penny Black. Question number seven, Emperor Wu, one of the greatest Chinese emperors who assumed the throne in 141 BC, was part of which Chinese dynasty that ruled from 206 BC to 220 AD and was known for the invention of paper and the use of water clocks and sundials? Emperor Wu was a part of the Han Dynasty. Question number eight. In the 1980s cartoon, this group's computer Teletron existed inside a volcano. Members of this group include Die Atlas, Ironhide, Red Alert, Cliff Jumper, and Bumblebee. What is the name of this group of Transformers led by Optimus Prime that battles the Decepticons? The 
The answer is the Autobots. Question number nine. American football players used to yell this word when tackled so that opponents would stop piling on. In the Canadian League, three is standard. What is this term that refers to the tries a team has to earn 10 yards? That term is a down. Question number 10. Outside of Japan, it is often misunderstood to just mean raw fish. However, in Japanese cuisine, what name, meaning sour rice, is given to vinegar seasoned rice, usually topped with a variety of ingredients including seafood, cooked and uncooked, and vegetables? Meaning sour rice, that term is sushi. Question number 11. This city was originally called Dairy Church, but was renamed for a local businessman. Located 14 miles east of Harrisburg, what is the name of this Pennsylvania location of a theme park, a place known as Chocolate Town, USA? That place is Hershey, Pennsylvania. Question number 12. Fish must have fins and scales to have this property. Meat and milk may not be mixed and leavened bread may not be consumed for Passover. What name is given to this set of Jewish dietary laws? The answer is kosher. Question 13. Gwendolyn Brooks, Wallace Stevens, and Ezra Pound were known for creating these. The jintishi is a Chinese form of this, and other forms include the sestina, the villanelle, and the rubai. A slam is a competition in which people recite original versions of what literary form? The answer is poems or poetry. Question 14. Sunnyvale, Fremont, Berkeley, and Oakland are near the shores of what busy body of water located south of the city of San Pablo that has been spanned by an iconic suspension bridge since the 1930s? The name of the bridge is the Golden Gate Bridge. The name of the water is the San Francisco Bay. Question 15. Between 1096 and 1270, the Albigensian and the Children's were part of what violent Christian movement that sought to remove all of the Muslims from the Holy Land and stamp out heresy? The answer is the Crusades. Question 16. There is one of these accidentals in the key signature of F major. What is the name of this symbol shown as a stylized lowercase b indicating the lowering of a note's pitch by one half step, which is the opposite of sharp? In music, the opposite of sharp is flat. Question 17. Teenager Sean Anderson's father went missing 10 years ago, and when new seismic activity begins in Iceland, Sean and Trevor go to investigate. 
What is the title of this 2008 Brendan Fraser film based on a Jules Verne novel in which characters find an ocean deep inside our planet? The answer is Journey to the Center of the Earth. Question 18. With works about farm life such as Sugaring Off, the painter Anna Mary Robertson Moses is better known by what nickname given to her because she did not begin painting until she was in her 70s? The nickname given to her was Grandma Moses. Question 19. In the Meisner effect, one can levitate above a superconductor. Lodestone is a natural one used to make compasses. What is the name for these objects that are able to attract or repel each other? The answer is a magnet. And question 20. In medieval times, Stephen Fryer said one of its feathers could restore sight to the blind. What name is given to these creatures known to guard treasure with the wings and head of an eagle and the body of a lion? The answer is a griffin. All right, that is it for today. Thank you for watching today's episode of Road Trippia. This is actually the second time this episode's been recorded. The first time it got recorded, I was tweaking and doing a little bit of editing and my whole computer shut off all the way down, said there was an error, and it did not save it. I did not save it. So I had to start all over again. So this is now going on about 35 minutes of me talking straight for Friday Night Pub Quiz. Hopefully it was worth it. I do think it went much smoother the second time, but my goodness, that takes a lot of talking to read the same quiz twice in a row back to back. I really noticed it this week while I was traveling or this last couple weeks while I was traveling. I've been using the same computer now since day one. Actually, I got it well before day one. So this laptop that I'm using right now hopefully will make it the full 1,000 trivia quizzes. Once I get back home, probably after the first of the year, I have every intention to buy a better, bigger, faster, stronger more capable computer to make these go a little bit easier on the back end side of making these episodes. But I'm just not ready to do it now. So if everybody could just cross your fingers and hope that this old faithful Dell laptop makes it for about another 80 episodes, that would be great. Like I've mentioned before, I have been traveling, but I'm back in England now. Now that I'm back in England, I've got a little bit more time to make these trivia quizzes. One thing I did not plan on, uh, they did cut my internet access because the billing cycle was up. You know how that goes when you're getting ready to move. So rather than pay for another four weeks on top of it after I've left, they ended it this week. So now I can make the quizzes at home and write the quizzes at home but then I have to go somewhere like a coffee shop or something to actually get them uploaded somewhere with Wi-Fi. So I'm trying to get further ahead. And you know when you're packing your house and getting ready to move, that's kind of hard. So I want to give a huge thank you to the people who have sent in quizzes this week and before. I know there's still some that I haven't even used yet, but the people who send in these quizzes make it so easy for me. I just wanted to say thank you. You know 
the uh, comedic classic comedic television quiz from this week that was sent in by Kathy K. Thank you very much. And then Once Upon a Time in Greece sent in by Trish and Tom. They do good work. They've sent in quite a few quizzes. Thank you to all three of you. You're keeping this channel going. Uh, there will come a time where I'm able to take over again, but man, I just can't explain to you how helpful it is to have to sit down at the computer, do a quiz, and have some preloaded material ready to go. You guys are lifesavers. You're helping keep this channel alive. We're getting it to 1,000 quizzes and then beyond. This is now a fully functional team project at this point. Um, it's out of my hands. You guys are the ones doing all the work, sharing it, liking it, commenting on it. That's what's keeping this channel going. I appreciate it, and I'm sure everybody else who's watching this channel does as well. Here is question 21, the tiebreaker for Friday Night Pub Quiz number 27. Complete this quotation given at St. John's Church in Richmond, Virginia in March of 1775. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, Almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or what? If you are an American, this one should be pretty easy. Give me liberty or give me death. That was Patrick Henry, one of the founding fathers of America back in 1775. Give me liberty or give me death. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow for another new trivia quiz. Thank you again, Kathy and Trish and Tom.